Hello folks and modelers, I'm back for another kit review. So before that, I would like to apologize. There's some construction work going on in the neighborhood. So there's some drilling noise. So today I'll be reviewing a little bit about this uh, mini hobby models uh, US Enterprise CBN 65 at 1350 scale. So that's uh, what the box looks like. It's really big. Uh, there's a Tamiya cement here for size comparison. So this kit, I think uh, it's not new. I think it's been in the market for some time. But it is a bit of a mysterious uh, kit because it is being compared to the Tamiya's uh, Enterprise kit. So uh, just quick look at the box, uh, box art and these air wings here, this uh, artwork looks very similar to the Tamiya's uh, artwork. So this, this kit is, uh, is uh, manufactured in 2018. So it has come a long way because uh, the Tamiya kit designed uh, and released in 1984. And then uh, Mini Hobby Model came out with this in 2001. And then, uh, after another 20 years, uh, you know, they're still manufacturing it. So this kit has been around for like, what, 40 years. So, uh, I'll, I'll get into that topic about, you know, what, how similar this kit is to the Tamiya's kit. So, a uh, little bit of uh, some photos here. And the other side is the same as the front. So this is a side opener box. It was really difficult to take out the, the box from the inside. So I have actually taken out everything from the box. And it's all laid out here. And that is the that big ship there. And it's, uh, it's almost completed. I'm just kidding. Uh, so uh, these are all the sprues here but just before we uh, go into the sprues check out the quality I would like to discuss a little bit about this uh, you know how similar it is to the Tamiya's kit and uh, just to, just to take a look at this uh, Skillmates uh, website so um, Tamiya had this release in 1984 and in the 90s, Trumpetta did uh, release this. But I, I think it, it never got into the market and eventually went to Mini Hobby Model. Came out in 2001. So there's two versions of this uh, Enterprise from Mini Hobby Model. One is the, the one with the bird nest uh, uh, tower. So uh, let's take a look at the instruction manuals and uh, this is basically just uh, my perspective of this uh, this kit this is the all the sprue layout so so this uh, this air wing sprue here is actually exactly the same as the uh, Tamiya's uh, kit and sprue D and E is actually also the same. I have printed out uh, Tamiya's uh, instruction manual um, from the web. So if, if we look at this, uh, size is not the same, but Basically, all the parts that is laid out here are exactly the same as the Mini Hobby model. Except that over here, they have these uh, sections uh, switched. 
So, you know, positioning of the, the, the sections, I think they can do this in the tooling because these are probably uh, individual blocks that they can, uh, they can move around. But, but all the parts uh, laid out here is exactly the same. So uh, that's for Sprue E. And for Sprue D over here, um, it's actually for the island, the superstructure. Everything is exactly the same, except that for mini hobby model, they don't have this uh, piece here, that piece over there. And, and this block is actually, uh, it is, uh, um, let me just show you Tamir's instruction sheet. So it is this piece here, which is actually an inner block with all the walls gonna stick to it so for mini hobby model they have uh, left this piece out probably for cost reduction purpose and <clears throat> for mini hobby model uh, basically all the walls will just stick there, there will be nothing in there compared to the Tamiya's uh, there is a one block in the so i think it works uh, basically it will be hollow inside you know so so tamir's kit is probably more complete but you know mini hobbies uh, are just uh, you know probably due to the cost so mini hobby models uh, instruction is uh, more compact they got more things uh, to assemble in in one uh, step and it only has until step 17 but for Tamiya's uh, instruction they are more uh, basically each each steps have uh, really few things to to go together and there's a uh, 28 pages of uh, instruction manual on Tamiya's kit so th these are the things which I found on, you know, very similar to the Tamiya kit. So, you know, maybe they have uh, copied or replicated, but I, I guess it doesn't really matter because for me, I'm just happy that uh, Mini Hobby model is uh, producing this kit at like one third of the price of this uh, Tamiya's kit. So, uh, part, uh, part numbers, there, there's, I counted there was like 730 parts, but for the ship, there's, uh, there's only about 500 parts. The rest are the air wing parts, which, you know, has about 200 over parts. So that's the instruction manual for this kit. So let's just move over to uh, the plastics. Uh, today I'm not doing the typical way of uh, taking out the sprues from bags and from the box because there, there was, I think those will be, uh, take, you know, it takes too much time for this. So let's uh, take a look at this first sprue here. And this, this sprue is all the tiny bits. And also I have discovered something since this kit was designed in 1984 uh, probably a lot of the accuracy things were not really there because if if you look at these uh, these are the I think it's the MK29 C Sparrow weapon so I have actually checked the Kitty Hawk's uh, parts, which probably has the same uh, same weapon, and if if you take a look at these, 
So Kitty Hawk's uh, Sea Sparrow is that size and see the Enterprise is that big. So I, I'm sure, I, I don't really know what's the, the real dimension of this and I did not measure it. But I, I'm sure this uh, Kitty Hawk which was released, you know, uh, year 2000, like what, 2015, is, is definitely more accurate. So there are these kind of things that will happen. So I'm sure this is not the right size. And also, if if we look at the uh, life rafts, the ones from Kitty Hawk is that small, and Enterprise is, is that big. So again, yeah. I think in 1984, probably they did not even have a CAD, a 3D CAD tool, so yeah. So accuracy wise uh, for this enterprise, yeah, I think it's not there. But it will be the same for the Tamiya kit. And uh, since I do have these uh, extra things from the Kitty Hawk, I, I, I can replace it with these kind of things. And there's also these uh, phalanx, which I think... Uh, where is that phalanx? Okay, so I have to position it a bit. Got So when I when you look at this phalanx here, uh, yeah, this is a little bit smaller compared to this. So, yeah, that that's the difference, you know, from something designed from nineteen eighty four. I think my camera is a bit too low. I gotta lift it up a bit. Okay, so we have uh, two sprues uh, for this, uh, all these tiny parts here. Um, quality wise, yeah, there are flashes and you know things like that. Okay, so there's four sprues for the for the air wings, and these air wings are kind of similar to the 1500 scale Nimitz that I was working with but it's not as bad as that there are some you know details less flash but not as detailed as uh, Trumpetus uh, kits so there are four of these and there are four big sprues here so this one's for the deck and the deck here has a lot of uh, textures on the surface and it's a rough, it is a raised kind of uh, texture. It's quite rough, uh, I can see some sink marks over there and this kind of surface uh, very very rough not totally unpolished on the on the tooling so this is the quality that we are getting and on the back uh, lots and lots of ejector pin marks and these will be really difficult to clean or maybe even impossible but since this is the bottom maybe it's not so uh, probably you can't really see it, but yeah, it's it's really dirty. Lots of lots of cleaning to do. So I think for this kit, uh, a lot of time will be spent on cleaning, just like that uh, USS Tycon Daroga which I completed a month ago. Uh, these are the superstructure parts. Like I said, the the surface is not clean. So I think all these surfaces will have to be sanded to get a smoother surface. It's flashings over there. 
So this is what we are getting. I was quite concerned about uh, offsets uh, on the parts. And what I mean by offset is when, when the core and cavity of the mold does not align, for example, like uh, the parts will, you know, especially rounded parts, if it have uh, an offset, it will be really difficult to get that in back into a circle. And I had that issue with the Ticonderoga. So the parts doesn't actually look, even if you clean it, it won't look, uh, won't look the same. So this is that sea sparrow uh, weapon, which I believe is very big. So for this kit, uh, I don't really know what to expect. And I have not bought any photo edge or additional things to go with it. Not just yet. Because uh, basically my plan on this kit is uh, instead of following the instructions uh, step by step, I will do bits and parts here and there, assemble it. First to find out if, uh, if it's really, uh, if it's going to turn out to be something, you know, like a buildable kind of kit. So if that's possible, the next thing would be, you know, to see if it's worth adding in uh, expensive photo wedge parts. So, so I'll need to do a lot of uh, testing fits to to decide uh, what are the additional things I'm gonna add because I don't really want to spend too much money on expensive, uh, you know, <coughs> aftermarket stuff uh, if this kit is not gonna be uh, a nice kit. So this, uh, these are the three separate decks. And these decks have a very uh, high raised uh, lines. So I'm sure these will have to be sanded down a little bit. Because I think these raised lines, if it were to be on the real ship, it would be a very high bump. So it's not going to be realistic. And uh, on the bottom, as usual, there's a lot of these ejector pin marks. Will everything which will have to be cleaned up. So these are the same goes for this middle piece. Uh, all the raised. I've seen Tamiya's uh, parts, and I think I think it's not raised so high. These uh, raised these lines on the deck. And uh, so we got the hull. I did, you know, already start playing around with this and uh, basically now the bottom hull fits quite nicely because I have, I did sand out a bit on the, on the bottom here. Initially, it did not fit at all because uh, on this bottom hull, there is this uh, rib which actually goes into this groove over here. And there was a, uh, on the front part here, one side was like so much thicker than the other. So, so I, I sanded off these uh, ribs. And these bosses here, which fits into these holes, they were not aligned. So I, I, I made the holes bigger, cleaned off the, uh, bottom. Uh, the surface of this hull is, is more, yeah, more like a mirror. It's polished better than the parts, but still there are lots of, uh, you know, all these 
clashes. So I think there's a lot of work that needs to go into this. Probably the hull, the deck cleaning will easily take, I don't know, a couple of weeks. So from there, we'll decide <coughs> what kind of uh, things should be added. So I hope this doesn't turn out to be like that one 500 scale limit. And if it does, I, I, I have to apologize again because uh, if it's not a workable kit, I, I do have to, I might, you know, I might end up not painting it, but I hope not. And on this kit, since this is a motorized kit, uh, there were things like uh, this motors provided, some battery things. And these stands are a bit different from the Tamiya's kit. Tamiya, these, these two pieces can be combined with the nameplate given, but this is just two pieces uh, that cannot be combined together. I'll probably have to find a way to stick them up. And there are these uh, sheet metal parts that will actually go onto the hull. Probably as a support beam so that it doesn't twist, uh, you know. And since this is a motorized kit, yeah, again, there is that uh, switch hole which needs to be filled up just like the Taikon Daroga. So this kind of thing, uh, you know, is like extra work to be done. So that's that switch hole there. And there are these screw holes over here, which I know it will have to be filled up unless I close the jet deflector the jet blaster deflector plates. If I close this, then I don't have to worry so much about this. So yeah, a lot of thinking needs to go into this kit, how I'm gonna do it. So probably in the next uh, couple of weeks, I'll just try to build, uh, you know, skip steps, uh, try to send off things. Just, just to see how it turns out. And if it's a workable kit, I, yeah, I'll try to do it into something nice. So then maybe I'll get some photo edge. And then this, this kit does not come with uh, the deck decals. It only comes with this, which, you know, which is not much. And another one for the air wing. But there, there, I've seen uh, deck decals being sold separately from some other manufacturer. And for this kit, um, I've seen Edward uh, White and Zine photo edge. But Edward's uh, photo edge is, you know, split up into five parts and each one costs like 50, 60 US dollars. So, you know, if, if I get everything, it's just going to be too expensive. So I, I really need to think how to do this. And uh, I do have generic railings. I think railings is not a big problem, but for the island, uh, it's going to be a problem because I don't have the smaller things for the mast. And, and for this kit, I bought it at uh, 38 US dollars. So it was really cheap. So I do have maybe little bit of margin to get some extra stuff for this. I think the Tamiya kit costs over 200 US dollars. So so for one quarter of the price I uh, you know just I was just so tempted to get this. But you know mini hobby model uh, having made you know built one I, I think I roughly know what to expect from this. So, uh, this is the kit review for this time. I might have more information, you know, when I, when I come up with my build updates. So, yeah, just uh, stay tuned. I hope this review was uh, informational for those who, who wants to build mini hobby models.
uh, if you have Tamir kit, I, I'm sure you have no problem with it. So uh, yeah, until the next time, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, probably soon I will come back with some uh, build updates. So until then, um, happy modeling and cheers for now. Goodbye.